So this is a video about all of this for Baro Smart Home Tech, because honestly, it's fascinating. I've actually had my Fabaro home center now for quite some time, which is the sort of main box that controls everything. It took me quite a while to think of all my home automation ideas, things that I wanted to happen when I did certain actions or the garden lights coming on at a certain time in the day. I actually got into a bit of a flow state with it, just with a pencil and a piece of paper, sat there one evening and wrote down all of my home automation ideas, things that I wanted to happen. So yeah, it's kind of where I want it now. It's looking pretty good and I can't wait to give you guys a tour of it and then show you how it's all set up. So the main problem with all of this smart home stuff throughout my entire finding anyway is that everything is in a different app. So I've got lights from Philips Hue, I've got lights from LifeX downstairs, I've got Nanoleaf light panels, I've got Sonoses. So the Fibaro Home Center is going to try and unify all of that if that makes sense and it does a pretty good job of it. So this button here, this is called the Fibaro button, uh, you can press it up to five times or hold it. So there's six different actions you can assign and this button here essentially just controls the lighting in the room. So if you hold it, it will turn all of the lights in here off. And each one of the five presses is a different LifeX scene. I think if I press it four times, it should turn all the lights to like some sort of like purple retro look in here. Yeah, there you go, it's pretty cool. Now the only other place that I actually use these buttons is in the lounge, so or the cinema room. So if we take a look through here, essentially there's just one on the table. So if you go ahead and give that a firm press, it'll go ahead and turn on the lights in here. And again, same thing, there's five different scenes in here for five different moods. Now, motion sensors are another thing that Fabaro make. That is what has just turned on the lights in this room. So just up there, there's a little wireless motion sensor and that's one thing to note as well. The button and probably all of the things that I'm actually gonna talk about for Baro wise are kind of all wireless, Z-Wave. So motion sensors, you can just drill them up anywhere. It's all wireless. The buttons, you can stick them on the wall, put them anywhere. So this motion sensor in here is actually controlling four Philips Hue lights that are in the roof. Now these are actually the sort of lights that you can change the color temperature on. So this motion sensor in the daytime, it'll set these lights to a nice ice white and then nighttime, well, it'll put them, well, nice and warm, dim down. So when you come in here, you don't get blinded by four ice white lights. So next up, we're back into the kitchen. I've got another one of these motion sensors. Now, its only job is to control the who made the rule sign, which is over there. Now, that just plugs into the wall, essentially, and it's a sign that lights up, and then when no motion is detected in here, it turns it off. So all it's essentially doing is saving energy for me. So in a second, we should hear my watch ding. There we go. That's it telling me that the back door has just been opened. So there's actually a contact sensor, again, it's all battery powered, it's all wireless, that pings off to the home center when the door is opened. And from that, you can do loads of things. Like I've just got it to send a notification to my watch when the back door is opened. I've also got one on the front door as well. Now, it gets really, really clever. So my garden lights are all automated with Fabaro plugs, like the who made the rules sign. Now they come on when the sun sets and they go off at 1 a.m. But what if I'm up after 1 a.m. and want to come outside and need some light? Well, if and only if it is after 1 a.m. and I open this door, the contact sensor will know and it will turn on the lights for five minutes so I can see what's going on. Now, I was almost running out of places to put these buttons. However, I realized that Fabaro has integration with Sonos. So there's some Sonos speakers out here. This button is tied to five different Sonos favorites, which are Spotify playlists like the Billboard charts and housework, different things like that. So if we press this, we should get a sort of assortment of music coming out these speakers. Sick. <laughs> now, I was using loads of energy and because I pay the electricity bills around here, it's always nice to save a little bit of money and the planet too. So I had this saddle light up here. I think that's what you call it, a saddle light. Uh, yeah, it was on like 24 seven. So instead of that, it's now controlled by the smart home for Baro Center. So it only comes on if my back door is opened or if that bad boy up there catches you. Now that is a little motion sensor. They're not meant to go outside, but I saw people on the Fibaro forum saying that if you put a little bit of sellotape around the motion sensor, you can go ahead and leave these things outside absolutely fine. So that light is now motion sensored from here and comes on if the back door's opened. 
Now, coming back inside, I've got another button here next to the door. Now, this essentially overrides the garden lights, so they come on automatically, like I mentioned, at sunset. But if you want to turn them off or on for whatever reason, you can do with this button. It also controls some of the lighting in the kitchen. But it's just a button. It can do whatever you want it to because it's Fabaro. I think this is a little bit more interesting. This is the Fabaro key fob, and it's essentially controlling your house with a PlayStation controller. Now, I haven't had the key fob for a while, so I haven't got much set up with it, but essentially it does some basic things. If you hold the square, it should turn off all the lights in this room, and then if you just press the square once, it should turn them all on. The circle one does the garden lights, and then the plus one, this is really cool. If you click this, it actually sends a signal to a Logitech Harmony, which is gonna now power on my speakers so I can listen to music. And the Logitech Harmony lives under here for any of you asking. So this really backs up what I was saying at the start of the video with all of these different apps. Logitech Harmony apps, LifeX apps, Philips Hue apps, Sonos apps. Now it's just all in one. And there is a home center app which you've got on your phone. But like I've said, I'm just trying to show you guys all of the different like input methods that Fabaro make, like the buttons and these key fobs and the motion sensors. We'll get onto the apps a little bit later. Now, one thing to note, all the motion sensors too actually work as motion, like PIR sensors for security. So you can get them so that if they're breached, they will send a notification to your phone. I've got one up here in the hallway too. This controls the nanoleaf panels. It sets it at certain brightnesses depending on the time of day. Because if it was midnight and you came out here, you wouldn't want this thing to blind you. I think it only puts it on like 5% or something at night time. So, welcome to my bedroom. This is a little bit weird, isn't it? But this is the room, I think, where all of this Fabaro smart home stuff actually helps me the most, uh, and I'll explain that in a second. But essentially in here, I've got a Fabaro plug which controls two lights on the side of the bed, and then a button here so that if I press it, these two lights should come on, and then if this button is held down, it should go ahead and turn these lights off. Now, there's also a Fabaro motion sensor in here which controls all the Philips Hue lights in the roof. Now, this is where it gets super 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 cool for me because in the daytime the lights come on and they look like this but at night time if it senses me and it's two in the morning and I get out of bed it puts all the lights on in here really really dim so I can actually make my way over to the toilet which essentially in here I think all it does is it turns the shower light on to 1% in the middle of the night so if I get up and I need to go to the toilet I've got light automatically motion sense but it's not light that's gonna completely blind me and I get up in the night quite often and I see this happen and I just think what are you doing Sergey it's all automated so with all that being said this is how you actually set all of this up this is the home center to sort of welcome screen you get to go through here and see all of the different rooms in your house all the different devices in your house you can go ahead and click the play buttons and toggle them so if I was to I don't know turn on kitchen off you should see that all the lights in here will go off. Okay, so I think the best way for me to explain how this works is to show you how you set up a simple scene. So I've got a kitchen busy scene here. Now busy is the word for a LifeX scene that I have in the LifeX app for the lights in this room, the sort of scene and how it's set up. So if you go in here, it says that if the white kitchen button is pressed once or the white kitchen door button is pressed once or the key fob is pressed once, then to run the kitchen busy scene. And that is as simple as it gets. You can add different things to this. You can take things away. So you could say that when all of these things happen, set the kitchen to busy, but also turn off the nano leaf light panels. You could do absolutely anything. It's a blank canvas for your imagination to think of things and then make it happen, essentially. So as you can see here, this is the bathroom one. Now I've got bathroom bright, bathroom cool, bathroom warm, and bathroom low. So there's actually four different time frames that the lights are gonna change. If the bathroom motion sensor is breached, then press button one one on the Philips Hue bridge, which is the bathroom light controller, and set the brightness to 30, and set the color tone to 10, which is really, really warm. 100 being really, really cool. <laughs> and talk to you guys about this for a quick second because it's all well and good showing you the end product and how good it is but yeah shocker to get this to work as well as it does a lot of setup like I said at the start has to go into this. So I actually had a Fabaro certified installer come round to my place because well I wanted to know everything about the system and he was very very good his name was Carl. 
He essentially got my system up and running for me, taught me the basics of how to set things up and how to make the different scenes. Honestly, without him, I wouldn't have known really where to begin. Essentially, you install loads of plugins to your home center so it can access certain things like LifeX and Philips Hue. And sometimes if there isn't an official plugin, people have made what's called a virtual device, which you can upload to your home center, give it the IP address and off you go. We had to do this with the Nano Leaf light panels. But as soon as all the hard setup is out the way, you can essentially control any smart device in your home, as long as it's kind of, you know, over the internet or on your network via the home center. So essentially on the home page of the app, it shows you all of the favorite devices. So the devices that you're accessing the most and the scenes that you're running the most. So mainly I'll just stay on this page, but if I want to go and change any of my scenes or run any of my scenes, I can just click on the scenes tab at the bottom there and then go ahead and run any of these scenes. So the scenes here that let's say turn on the speakers via the Logitech Harmony in the kitchen, or there's four different scenes for the four different lighting temperatures for the downstairs bathroom. And if I click on them here, I can just run that scene and have it happen. But the app is really basic, but that is all it really needs to be. It's just allowing you to access your devices at home, on your phone, anywhere. But other than that, that is pretty much it. That is the Fabaro Smart Home Tech, and I hope you've enjoyed this video because we enjoyed putting it together. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Adios.